are listening to Behind the Numbers from Calamos Wealth Management, the podcast where our investment professionals get behind the statistics that drive the markets. Joining us today is Matt Freund, co-CEO and head of fixed income for Calamos Investments. Oh, it's my pleasure. Well, we've just come out of a Fed meeting where the Fed kept rates at the same level. Uh, can you take, take us through the decision-making process? Well, I, I think the Fed uh, really has done exactly what the market was expecting them to do. Uh, they left rates unchanged and, and really, has, looking back at the whole Fed activity, um, the Fed has been very transparent in signaling to the markets what its actions are going to be. Even the hike in December, where they've had problems, has been on communication. In December, they were too harsh. Uh, in January and February, they were seen as being exceptionally dovish, meaning we're going to keep rates very low. Uh, and now they've tried to pivot the other way and say, well, we're more data dependent. We may raise rates, we may lower rates, depending on what the economy and inflation show us later on in the year. So as the Fed tries to deal with understanding where the U.S. economy is and how healthy it is, uh, what are the data points that, that concern you uh, when you're trying to figure out what the Fed's trying to figure out in making good investments in the fixed income markets? Yeah, the, the Fed has really pointed to uh, a couple different mandates. You know, the first one is to keep inflation low. And on that um, score, inflation has never really approached their 2% target. And actually, that 2% target, they, they've been very consistent that they have plus or minus 50 basis points. So they would be willing to let inflation get as high as 2.5%. And the highest it got was 2 and it's currently 1.6% today. So there's plenty of room there. They're looking at full employment. That, that's a pretty good story. But they've added, and one of the big pivots has been financial conditions, not just here in the United States, but globally. And that pivot to a global financial uh, picture has really been... Uh, something new that is over the last couple of months. So one of the one of the bromides that we all kind of look to is that when the US sneezes the world catches a cold and we're now in a world where China is a much more uh, interesting component of the world economy. Europe continues to be important in the world economy. Uh, how do we think about these global metrics uh, in the fixed income world? Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. When when you look around the world today, uh, especially when you're comparing US rates, our rates are actually some of the highest in the uh, developed world. Uh, they're, they're still near zero or even negative uh, in, in places like Euro um, Europe, Germany in particular, and Japan. So when you think about the whole world and, and our role in it, the US economy is doing fairly well. Um, so we had a very nice first quarter GDP print that may have been a little bit hotter than we can expect uh, later on in the year. Uh, you, China has slowed pretty dramatically, but they've had stimulus that is starting to take effect. And then all of the China suppliers, so people who sell into China, like Germany and, and other countries in the Pacific Rim, they've really had some um, slower than expected growth. So instead of being... Uh, uh, the engine that drives the world. Uh, I was at the Milken conference. They talked about us being the tugboat pulling the world, and I think that's the right analogy. We're, we're, we're pretty good, and we're pulling the rest of the world along. So as we have the global considerations in place, how do we think about the United States in particular from a corporate debt standpoint? Yeah, so, so really we, we try to remind investors that it's not just one bond market. It is a market of individual bonds. And really we break it down into three buckets. There's investment grades. These are stronger companies without a lot of um, risk of default. Bank loans, which can be risky depending on the company, but are generally secured and at the top of the stack. And then finally, high yield. And the dynamic there is that the high yield market has been very well behaved, uh, primarily um, because it had to be. It didn't see a lot of flows and is actually about the same size today that it was three years ago. Um, but the loan market has just exploded and we've seen underwriting discipline relax. And at the same time, the investment grade market is also showing some pressure. Uh, this is mainly in the weaker triple B space where companies have sold a lot of stock, um, I'm sorry, sold a lot of debt to buy a lot of stock and that's caused their metrics to go up. So we're, we're worried about the credit markets, but not high yield as much as leveraged loans and the weaker 
uh, investment grade. Names. Is that normally isn't it normally the opposite? It is normally the high yield guys are the ones that get themselves uh, in trouble and um, over lever and over borrow and and think about. Um, you know, great growth prospects. This time, though, they didn't see the flows, and the high yield market is really very, very healthy for where we are in the cycle. So, as we look to uh, other factors and other data that investors should look at over the next couple of weeks, couple of months, uh, as they try to synthesize what's happening in the fixed income markets and the global economy, what are some other things that we should be thinking about? You know, the, the things that. Um, that we're that that we are we're thinking about here at Calamos are really things that are very hard to measure and quantify, but what you think are really important. So the first, what we've already touched on, has to do with the whole global growth idea. So um, we're, U.S. investors are very used to being home country biased and looking inside, and as we talked about, the U.S. is doing um, relatively very well. Uh, the problem is, is the risks are places like China, uh, like Britain with Brexit, like some of the places throughout Europe where populous, populism is growing. We don't know how to handicap that um, quite as well. The next big risk is the trade deal that uh, we felt good about it two weeks ago. We feel less good about it today. Uh, and then the next um, um, risk is one, we have an election in 18 months or so, and we're going to have some pretty binary um, choices in that election. And so if there's a slowdown in growth, would that be something where you worry about that as it relates to the fixed income markets? Yeah, so so that's a good news, bad news story. So on the good news side, if, if inflation stays modest, if growth, I'm sorry, yes, inflation stays modest and growth moderates from here, we don't think there'll be pressure on Treasury um, yield. So the Treasury yield today is less than two and a half percent. Everybody was sure it was going up. Um, we we weren't quite so sure, and so we we we've done very well in that environment. Um, but the bad news part of that story is that if growth slows, there's a chance that credit spreads can can creep wider from here. But but I'll tell you, we're, we're in the sl sweet spot right now. I mean, if growth is bouncing around between two and a quarter and three and a quarter. I mean, that's an, an ideal environment for um, corporate credit. Terrific insight. Thanks, Matt. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for listening to Behind the Numbers with Calamos Wealth Management. Look forward to future programming on calamos.com backslash WM. Calamos Wealth Management is a registered investment advisor. Calamos Wealth Management is not providing any investment, financial, economic, legal, accounting, tax advice, or recommendations in this podcast. The views and strategies described may not be suitable for all investors. Investing involves risk, including loss of principal. Opinions, estimates, forecasts, and statements of financial market trends that are based on current market conditions constitute our judgment and are subject to change without notice. To the extent that a listener has any questions regarding the applicability of any specific issue discussed to his or her individual situation, he or she is encouraged to consult with a professional advisor of his or her choosing.